Her Majesty was off to Canada. The airport commandant escorted her towards the Comet 4, while the Duke walked with the Queen Mother and the Princess. Britain will not see the Queen again for six weeks. Last to bid her bon voyage outside were the Prime Minister and some of his colleagues. The family goodbyes were said inside the aircraft. This was the beginning of the 15,000 mile tour of the oldest dominion on which the Queen will cross the North American continent and go as far north as the Yukon. In just a few minutes, the comet would begin its flight. Godspeed Your Majesty was a thought in the minds of all who waited there to see the takeoff. And mixed with the Queen's regret at leaving home was the assurance of a truly royal welcome in friendly Canada. The High Commissioner for Canada, Mr. Butler and the American Ambassador waved final farewells. St. Lambert Lock, Montreal Island, will be the scene of the ceremonial opening by Her Majesty of the St. Lawrence Seaway. There, the bow of the Royal Yacht Britannia will break a golden ribbon. The seaway will be officially and royally declared open. New lift bridges at each end of the lock give the 120-foot clearance necessary for ocean-going ships. From there, vessels can now steam by way of the Great Lakes and their connecting waterways into the very heart of the continent. Seven new locks above Montreal overcome what was formerly the barrier of rapids. Gone now is the tantalizing obstruction of the rapids. The old dream is fulfilled of a highway for ships from Duluth at the head of Lake Superior to the Gulf of St. Lawrence 3,000 miles away. Small wonder that those who carried out this truly epic achievement called it the Eighth Sea. For centuries, the Great Lakes have beckoned mariners to sail into them from the Atlantic in our day and age, mariners can now do so. On the way to Duluth, the many locks enable ships to climb 600 feet. What a tribute it all is to Canadian vision and enterprise helped by US cooperation. Power, too, is provided by the seaway. Jointly, Ontario and the state of New York have established here generating capacity of more than one and a half million kilowatts. And now ships from all over the world can come to Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, all the great cities bordering the Great Lakes. We end our survey of the seaway at Cleveland, Ohio, now, to all intents and purposes, an Atlantic port. The free world hails this stupendous achievement, the St. Lawrence Seaway. <laughs>